Marie Curie started as lab assistant of Henri Becquerel and became more famous than him for her pioneering work on radioactivity. She won two Nobel Prizes. Charles Darwin was assistant to geologist Adam Sedgwick and surpassed his fame for his theory of evolution. Francis Crick worked with Linus Pauling before co-discovering the double helix structure of DNA, the code of life. What if we could give every scientist on Earth access to lab assistance of such caliber, assistants that work with them and learn from them, that know all about their field and ways of working, that automatically stay up to date on everything their field produces, data, methods, tools, and know how to access and use them. Assistants that can create, critique, and validate new research ideas and directions. And assistants that speak every language on Earth and can be spoken to like humans. Thanks to generative artificial intelligence, this is not a dream. A Cambrian explosion of AI assistance has started to fundamentally change how scientists work. And this is changing the face of science. The scientific method is one of humanity's greatest accomplishments. We observe nature, we formulate a hypothesis, we run experiments to test it, and then we look at the outcomes and decide whether our hypothesis holds up or whether we need to change it. And then we repeat. The scientific method has given humanity the tools to fight disease, to understand economies, and to run labs on Mars. The scientific method will not change, but it has been hitting a glass ceiling. The complexity and scale of many scientific problems is too overwhelming for science to get a grasp on them. This is particularly true in biology, the science that studies living systems. Biological data is messy, and it blows out of all proportions for even the smallest biological systems. Experimental work to study them is very tedious and time-consuming. Let me paint you a picture to explain what I mean. Proteins are the smallest building blocks and workhorses of life. Some of them speed up chemical reactions. Others give cells their shape. And yet others transport substances through organisms. There are over 826 million unique types of proteins known across species. One single human cell contains about 20 million protein molecules. The number can change depending on the type of cell. There are 36 trillion cells in a human body. That means that at any given point in time, there is about one sextillion, it's a one with 21 zeros, protein circulating around a human body going about their business. If you had as many grains of rice, you could cover the entire surface area of the Earth to a depth of one and a half meters. Now imagine each one of those grains moving around with purpose, appearing, disappearing, reappearing. Now try to understand what the movements of a few of those grains in Fiji might have to do with the movements of a few others up at the North Pole. Using this analogy, one single human cell would cover only the surface area of two basketball courts. But even that system is so large and complex that we cannot currently model it using our scientific toolbox. We do not understand life. It's not the scientific method that fails us here. It's the sheer size and diversity of the system we try to study that stifles us. Whether it is trying to understand life on our planet or the enormity of the universe that we live in, conventional scientific methods can only get us so far. 
we need to give scientists superpowers. For years now, so-called narrow AI has lent scientists helping hands, whether it was discovering warning signals for incoming seizures in the brain activity data of epilepsy patients, or whether it is scanning through hundreds of millions of radio signal snippets looking for techno signatures of extraterrestrial life, or whether it is predicting the 3D structure of every protein known to mankind, there are many examples where AI models have been trained to perform tasks that human scientists either couldn't do at all or not at the scale of the systems they intend to study. One of those models, Google DeepMind's AlphaFold, has already had such profound scientific impact that its developers have just been awarded the Nobel Prize in Chemistry last month. However, as bespoke as these AI models are, they are narrow. That means they cannot perform any tasks they have not specifically been trained for. And furthermore, scientists need to know that these models exist, how they work, what they can do, how to access them, how to run them, and then how to interpret the results that they produce. All of these are highly complex tasks that require specially trained data scientists to work alongside domain scientists for long periods of time. This assistance is a luxury that most scientists simply do not have. Only 16% of scientists worldwide and only 18% of biologists currently use AI as part of their scientific work. Building and deploying cutting-edge AI models has become an elite expensive and time-consuming science in itself. The same is true for many more methods and techniques which scientists have traditionally used to get to the top of their field. Reading for decades, scientific papers, until you have your very own Eureka moment and come up with that new research idea. Waiting for months, sometimes forever, for that opportunity to brainstorm with the extremely smart, but also extremely busy colleague. Training for years, one researcher career at a time, how to perform complex experiments. These limitations have set the boundaries of what scientists could accomplish in their lifetimes, and of what humanity could accomplish using science, until now. A once-in-a-millennium window of opportunity has just opened up to give every scientist a completely new type of tool with which they can overcome these limitations. Archimedes famously said, give me a firm place to stand on and a lever and I shall move the earth. I believe that generative AI has put science in that place and finally allows us to forge that lever. Here's why. At the beginning of last year, Generative AI had gotten close to ingesting pretty much all publicly available digital information there was. It started to excel at performing a seemingly unrelated, endless variety of tasks that it had never been trained for. The era of bespoke chatbots had begun. About a year ago, Generative AI started to learn how to use tools to solve problems. These tools could be other AI or non-AI models, data, or actual physical tools and robots. Generative AI assistants, or AI agents, as they're also called, were born. Then, a couple months ago, these AI agents learned how to plan and reason to solve problems in ways that no other AI was able to until then. AI agents had become strategic. And just a couple weeks ago, it was shown for the very first time, empirically, that scientists who had used AI agents as sparring partners to brainstorm new research ideas could come up with more novel ideas 
than scientists who had not used AI. AI agents had become creative. From hypothesis generation to experimental design to analyzing outputs, with AI agents as helpers, scientists for the first time can apply all scientific methods and engineering techniques ever developed to all scientific data ever produced. This, of course, needs to be done ethically, safely, responsibly. And it doesn't all happen at the same time. Some scientists and some scientific fields charge ahead, others follow. But ultimately, AI agents will bring them all together across their scientific specialties, blending their skills and amplifying them. Meet the astrobiochemist, the paleoecological geneticist, the quantum bioinformatician. Generative AI has the power to bring about a new generation of polymath. This will transform every scientific field, but probably none sooner and stronger than the health and life sciences. With AI agents, in their hands, biologists for the first time can scale the scientific method to a point where they can truly begin to unravel the mysteries of life. And we have begun doing just that. Here at CSIRO, Australia's National Science Agency, we are building AI agents that help our scientists to read the code of life, to design new proteins, to predict what they can do, and to plan and run lab experiments. We believe that using AI agents will make our scientists fast, game-changingly fast. We expect that using AI agents, we can bring down analytical timeframes from three to 12 months to four to five days. Scientists over at Startup in Silicon Medicine are giving us an idea of the mind-boggling impact that such a speed-up can have on biology. They have used AI to facilitate the entire end-to-end -end drug discovery and development pipeline, and the world first just brought a new drug candidate from its initial conception to clinical trial stage in only about half the time that it would have taken to get there using conventional methods. This will surely save hundreds of millions of dollars and years of work. But impact goes beyond productivity gains here. The drug candidate in question had been conceived by scientists who had used generative AI in the first place. They used AI to come up with the idea. AI and science had teamed up and together accomplished something that neither one of them could have done by themselves. This is the beginning of a movement. BioNTech, the developers of the very first COVID-19 vaccine, just recently announced that they're working on a specialized AI-powered lab assistant that can automate scientific experimental workflows. And the makers of AlphaFold also recently shared that they as well are working on AI lab assistance for researchers, and particularly for biologists, that can help them plan and run experiments and predict their outcomes at scale. It's that scale that allows scientists to look at every single one of that one sextillion proteins and to explore what each one of them does and why and where and when. For the very first time in life, scientists can study life on its entire spectrum from single molecules to entire organisms. It's exhilarating. Google DeepMind founder and CEO Demis Sabis pictures all information that describes how the universe works as a tree of all knowledge. He believes that AI can help us solve some of these great scientific root problems, giving us access to new parts of the canopy and opening up entirely new areas of research. 
I believe we can build on that vision. I also believe we can be even bolder. We can give every scientist access to trustworthy, powerful lab assistants with which they can explore the entire tree and make sense of it all. Generative AI agents are those lab assistants. Let's build them. Let's share them. Let's use them to stand on their shoulders and climb that tree. AI agents will not replace human scientists. History is full of moments when human creativity and curiosity have triggered mind-boggling innovation and breakthrough discoveries. AI will not take away that ingenuity that, human brings, that humans bring to the game. But AI can enhance this ingenuity and accelerate our journey towards solutions that would otherwise have been decades away or entirely out of reach. The desire of biologists to understand life and the promise of generative AI to perhaps getting them there have brought AI and science together in a watershed moment. They're made from and for each other. Their success foreshadows a new era of enlightenment. AI will change the world of science, and in doing so, science will change the world.